topic, smallness. That is the basis of our society, philosophically. We don't think that it's mankind, or the nation, or the region, or the family. No, it's the individual, the smallest unit. And therefore, the, the topic of smallness is really absolutely basic to our societies. I won't belabor the economic points, namely that small firms are very active and dynamic, and uh, that start-ups have really brought us incredible advances in technology. That is obvious and has been uh, said a lot of times. I would like to refer to countries. We now see that parts of countries want to become independent. They strive, they want to become smaller. Look at uh, Scotland. Look at Catalonia out of uh, Spain, or look at Corsica out of France. They want to be smaller, and I think there are good uh, reasons for that. If you look at the outcome of small countries, small countries are incredibly successful. Look at per capita national income. Just a few miles or, or kilometers in the east, we have Liechtenstein, a very rich country. Austria also has a high per capita income. And, of course, Singapore. Congratulations, Deputy Prime Minister. It's a great achievement to show that it is smallness which makes high per capita income and not large countries. But per capita income is only one thing. I think even more important is, of course, happiness, or subjective well-being, uh, or life satisfaction. And if we look there, again, it's the small countries that dominate everything. Who is on top? Denmark, uh, Finland, Norway, and I'm delighted to say Iceland. Congratulations, Prime Minister. <laughs> and of course, congratulations to the Swiss Bundesrat, because Switzerland, this small country, belongs to the absolute top in terms of happiness, and I'm uh, very glad about that. So, I think, proudly, small is the correct thing to say and to do. However, is that really true? Look at the world. It's dominated by large entities. L Lamborghini, Bugatti, Ducati, or Bentley, Skoda, Seat, and Porsche are just brands, but no independent firms anymore. It's all Volkswagen. If you go to any country in the world and go in the main street, you see H&M, or you see Zara, huge firms, Nothing about smallness. So it's not so clear. When you look at uh, countries, it's, of course, clear that one nation dominates the world, the United uh, States, and China, a very, very large country, lurching behind, so again, large firms, uh, large uh, countries dominate. And if you look at the, those who are, who are really in the center of the movement of information technology, it's four American firms that are huge, 
It's, of course, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon. And if you, again, look at countries, 28 European countries merged or tried to merge into a European Union. So if you look at everything, you see, obviously, large is efficient. So we have two things, proudly small and efficiently large. And what do we do now? I mean, there are people who say, let's just take the middle. Let's all be medium. I think that's the worst solution possible. I think that's ridiculous. We shouldn't always compromise. In Switzerland, we are very good in compromising. But there, we should say there are things that are good if they are small, and there are things that are good if they are large. And how do we get them uh, together? I would like to advance two propositions. The first proposition is, Let's move away from fixed borders. Fixed borders are very bad to solve problems. This means that national states should be abundant. National states have fixed borders. These borders have absolutely no rationality. They are just historically given by some chance event in the past. For instance, that Vorarlberg is not part of Switzerland, or Switzerland is not part of Vorarlberg, is just all a matter of chance and has nothing to do with any rationality. So, my first proposition is, let's move away from the national states. My second proposition says, let's try to devise new entities, new entities that are flexible and dynamic and care for diversity. We can only progress technologically if we have diversity. It's just a wrong idea that somebody in Brussels or, in your case, in Washington, can say what will be the future in 20 years. That's just crazy. The only thing we can do, we can open the field, have much diversity, and then by chance somebody will hit the right target and will make an innovation, not the other way around. So, I think it's very important to see. We should reverse our thinking fundamentally. The first step should always be identify a problem. What is the issue? And in the second step, let's choose the borders or the areas which are appropriate to solve a particular problem the result will be a web of, of, uh, of entities uh, existing together. Uh, there is a concept called FOCI, which is the abbrevi abbreviation of F, stands for functional. Look, let's look at the issues. O stands for overlapping because it's a web and everything overlaps. C stands for competitive. It should be democratic, and it should be competitive in the economic sense. And the J stands for jurisdiction, which is very important. If you have new entities, they must have the right <coughs> to raise taxes. Regions and entities without taxes are just of no use. Taxation is the right, the most important element. Now, that is a, a new idea, this FOCI. And as you know, whenever a, a new idea comes up, everybody says a lot of counter-arguments. I would like to, to give you three counter-arguments which are 
very often raised. The first is this, these many different entities that overlap are complicated. True, but we live in the 21st century. Information is no longer a problem. So that's not a, a, an important argument against Foki. The second argument, which is very often raised, is people lose their identity. They are no longer American, German, or Austrian, or Swiss. They, have, they are connected with a great many entities. Uh, I think that's no good argument either, because we all know that we have multiple identities today. We, don't, we are not only a member of a nation, we are a member of a profession, we are a, a member of, uh, or, or we identify even with a football club, as some of you uh, experienced yesterday evening. So we have multiple identities, and that's the normal thing in a modern society. And the third argument, which is always comes about with a new idea, people say, it's impossible. And I think, again, that's a wrong idea. Uh, international firms have something like FOCI, so many different entities working and overlap, overlapping even uh, uh, do that. International firms go in this direction. In the 12th to the 17th century, there was the Hamze, which was extremely successful and was a type of focus or foci, functional overlapping competition, uh, was exercised there with great success and the, the, the cities making up this Hanse were in five or six uh, nation, uh, entities which today are called uh, nations. And in Switzerland, we have a lot of communes that are somewhat similar to those folky. We have, for instance, school communes, we have church communes, we have political communes, they all overlap. And as uh, the vice president of Switzerland said, we are doing quite well with that. So what I would like to encourage you, and especially the members of the young generation, stop thinking in terms of national governments and uh, na nation states. That's something of the 19th and the 20th century. Let's move to the 21st century by considering new possibilities, flexible, dynamic, and diverse entities. Thank you very much. <laughs>